To write more sophisticated programs with R, you will need to control the flow and order of execution in your code. One fundamental way to do this is to make certain sections of code dependent on a condition. If the condition is true, a certain segment of code gets executed and if condition is false, another section of code gets executed. In R, there are different conditional structures such as if else statement and switch statement. In this video, we will look at if else conditional statement. Let's have a look at the if statement first. The if statement takes a condition. If the condition evaluates to true, the R code associated with the if statement is executed. The condition to check appears inside parenthesis, while the R code that has to be executed if the condition is true follows in curly brackets. Let's open the R Studio and create the if statement construct. We will check whether x is an integer. If x is an integer, we want r to print out x is an integer. How can we do this using the if statement? Let's first create the integer object x. Then we will write the if statement. The if statement starts with if, which is a keyword in r, followed by the condition. The condition is written inside parenthesis and then the code is written inside curly brackets. So let's execute this if statement now. Since x is indeed an integer object, the if condition is satisfied and code inside the parenthesis got executed. Now what will happen if x is not an integer? Let's reset the x value with numeric value. Now let's execute this if statement. As you can see, in this case, the if condition is false, the code inside the parenthesis won't get executed and therefore nothing gets printed out. This brings us to the next type of if statement called if else statement. In the if else statement construct, the if statement gets extended with else statement. Please note the else statement does not need explicit condition. Instead, it has to be used together with an if statement. The code associated with an else statement gets executed whenever the condition of the if test is not satisfied. Returning back to our example, suppose we want to print out x is not an integer whenever the condition is not met. We can simply add the else statement. Remember to check the curly brackets. We got the curly brackets for if as well as else statement now. Now if we run the code with x equal to 12.223, we will get the printout x is not an integer because the if condition is false and therefore the code associated with an else statement gets executed. We can customize this statement even further. What if we want to include the character data type? In this case, we can add another layer to if else construct. We can use else if statement with its own condition. As you can see in the flowchart, if the first if condition gets satisfied, the code inside if statement gets executed and R ignores the rest of the statements. However, if the condition is not satisfied, then R will evaluate else if condition. Based on the result of else if condition, further statements get evaluated. Let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Here we will initiate x with character value. First R will check the condition. First R will check the if condition. Since this condition is obviously false, R will head over to the else if condition. This condition is also evaluated to false. Since none of the earlier conditions were evaluated to true, the R will finally execute the last print command inside the else statement. 
Another important point to note in case of if statements. Remember that as soon as R stumbles upon a condition that evaluates to true, R executes the corresponding code and then ignores the rest of the control structure. This becomes important if the conditions you list are not mutually exclusive. Have a look at this example that checks if a number is divisible by 2 or by 3. When x equals 6, the first condition evaluates to true. So R prints out divisible by 2. Now R exits the control structure and will not look at the rest of the statements. So although the second condition for the else if part would evaluate to true, nothing gets printed out. Great, we have come to the end of the video. In this video, we looked at if conditional statement. In the next video, we will see the switch statement. I will see you in the next video.